hey, I'm Greg and I'm a science communicator. And science communication has changed my life. It's taken me onto big stages where I've got huge crowds to jump and create an earthquake. It's taken me onto stages where I've made a bowling ball do a loop the loop. It's taken me onto telly where I've made giant vats of custard for people to run on or I've driven a jet cart. I also really love getting to work with you guys, getting to work with scientists who are doing groundbreaking research, getting to find out what you're doing and helping you tell your story. Now, those are awesome experiences, but they're not the real reason I do this. Science communication comes in a whole range of flavours. It can be written, which could be online or in magazines or newspapers. That could be just a small blog or a comment or a Q&A or a big feature article. It can be broadcast from self-shot YouTube films or a podcast to a big feature film or a big TV series. It could be a museum exhibition, an art installation, a citizen science project, or it can be on stage, which could be just your classic lecture or a workshop or a bigger debate or a big production. If you're interested in science communication, the key is to choose whatever flavour suits your personality best and start at whatever level you feel most comfortable. This is my full-time job. I'm a professional science communicator, but you can do it alongside your research or as part of it. Just look at Brian Cox or Alice Roberts or Robert Winston or Helen Chersky. Some people say that science researchers like yourselves need to focus on doing high quality, objective research, undistracted, uninfluenced by the public. Other people say that actually it's your duty to communicate for the greater good, to educate the public. I say that both of those views are unrealistic and patronising, that actually you need to be having a conversation, you need to be listening as well as speaking. Science communication is a way to introduce the public to a scientific evidence-based way of thinking, to help them understand the science that is relevant to them, so that they can make their own decisions about things like GM or nuclear power or vaccinations. For me though, science communication is about sparking a sense of curiosity about the world. It's about encouraging people to ask good questions and go and find answers. It's about inspiring a sense of wonder. So here's the thing, science communication is a craft, it's a skill. So to improve you need to train, you need to practice, you need to get feedback. I've learned so much doing this for the last 10 years, but every time I film or do a show, I keep learning. I often get asked for my top tips for people starting out in science communication, so here are a few for you guys when you start communicating about your research. Think about your audience and speak in their language, that's really, really important. If it's a film or a talk, before you start, stop, pause, breathe, and then deliver in a much slower pace than you would normally. Don't try to be anyone else, just be you. Don't copy anyone else's style. Oh, and use story and emotion alongside the facts because that's a great way to pull people in and take them on your journey. And practice, 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 and practice some more. I do what I do because I really enjoy working out why something is how it is and then crafting a careful explanation about that why and that how. I then love presenting that to an audience in an inspiring, entertaining, clear way. And when you see that curiosity sparked, that wonder inspired, that penny drop in someone's mind, that is when I really see the power of good science communication. Give it a go because you may find that it changes your life and it will probably change someone else's too.